tell all the listeners that story you're about to uncork uh, with the with the list. Yeah, well, I think your dad and my dad are, were probably very similar. As I look back at it now, you're like, well, he was probably right about that. And he was probably right about that, and probably should have done this that way. That way, but anything I could do to not do it that way was way more fun and seemed way more acceptable uh, in my mind as to what was <laughs> what was right. Um, but the the story that we were talking about was, I guess it would have been. I don't know, probably 90, 94, 95, some, somewhere in there. So at that particular point, my dad was a, was a fireman, and he would, he would go to the fire station. And, and part of what we did from the time that I, I mean, I had a checkbook from the time I was in fourth grade. Most people probably don't know what a checkbook is. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, I, I, had to, I had to, it started with simple things like that. It was a checkbook, and then you had to go to work during the summer. And so I cleaned pools and painted fences, and that migrated into having all of our own stuff on, on the race team. So then I started working at the shop, you know, after school and during the summer. And as I got out of school, I guess I was just out of school. So he would leave the list on the side of the car, and I had myself and, and one of my friends that worked at the shop every day. And, and we liked to work different hours than my dad because the morning was too early. So I would, you know, come in, and, and the first thing we would Same. do is go to lunch yeah, with yeah. everybody, and then we would work into the night and into the morning, and then we'd come back the next day and start at lunch again. Yeah, That was not my dad's schedule, and that frustrated him. Um, but we always – for the most part, what we thought was done, we, we thought we would get the list done, whether it was to his liking or not. So uh, anyway, one day he came home from the fire station and he looked in the, in the shop and we had just got there and he looked at the car and he said the car was up on jack stands and it was completely done. We had scaled it. We'd taken everything off the car because I'm sure we had other things that, that we wanted to go do at night over the weekend before the race. And he was like, nope, you didn't do everything. Took the right front suspension off the car cussed all the way out of the shop through the upper spindle lower hub everything in the back of the truck <laughs> left and left says you're not racing tonight i was like well we're not racing tonight and my buddy looked at me and he said well we got three more cars in here why don't we just take the suspension off the the car over here great idea <laughs> I'm like i'm like you know what <laughs> at that and we're gonna we're gonna race the car how old were you i think i was 17 okay 18 and I said, we're going to race the car. So we take the suspension off. We put everything on the car. We load it in the trailer. We push it in the truck. We get to the racetrack, and we're like, yep, we're going to show him tonight. He probably won't even know we raced. <laughs> <laughs> so go out there, qualify, trophy dash, put it in the trophy dash, lap one of the trophy dash, right front hub brakes. Oh, oh no. Oh, God. Into the fence. <laughs> Poetic so, justice. At that point, we are loading the car up, and we are taking the car back to the rate, to the shop because we're going to fix it. <laughs> so we fix it up the best that we could. Before he found out. Yeah, he knew. He, <laughs> oh, he, yeah. he, he knew. He knew before we even before we even got oh. got out of the shop, probably. 